Hey, good morning. So I see a couple of you out there. So who do I got? And I'll try and aim this at the whiteboard as well as I can. Happy New Year. Yeah, good morning. Liam, uh, Liam, you don't need to be here. This is for a different class. Okay, good morning, folks. Who do I got there? Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Ingrid, you don't need to be here. Um, this is for 11th grade complete physics class, well, total physics. So, nope, you don't need to be here, Ingrid. Okay, Teresa, good morning. Let's see if we get some of our other total physics folks here today. Hey, all right. So, good, I got Zach here. Good morning, Zach. Happy New Year. Haven't seen any of you, but especially those that weren't in AP Chem. Okay, I got Teresa, I got Zach. Let's see if I got Anne Sophie or Ellie. We'll give them another minute and then we'll go ahead and start up. Mm, I'm gonna put something to review on the board. Okay, let's review. So what I put on the board, we did last time. If it's small, don't worry about it. We're, we're just reviewing what we did here last year. Eh. Okay, so we sort of said this. If we had a rocket ship going this way, okay, and we shown a light sort of back and forth in the rocket ship, and we had like a mirror, then in the rocket ship, the speed of light would just be going the speed of light. So nothing special. But if we look at it from the point of view of a guy on Earth, so he or she on Earth would be looking at this rocket going by, and for them, it looked like the length of this thing would not be here, sorry, the length that the flash of light travels in the rocket would not look like this distance, but would look like this distance, right? Okay, so instead of that, we'd cover this, and instead of going out and back, it would be hmm, hmm. So the length is much, much bigger. Therefore, the time has to be greater. And we call that um, time dilation, like your eyes dilate, right? Um, this makes time go longer, um, so to speak. Uh, no, sorry, it takes longer if you're in a moving perspective. In other words, so the guy on earth would say, oh, when this fellow comes back, the other person from uh, the rocket ship, the guy on Earth will have aged more. The guy in the rocket ship will have aged less because he or she on the rocket has to have a great greater amount of time because of the greater distance that has been that has been covered. I don't think I said that word very well, but at any rate, so so time passes slower. We could say to the person in a moving perspective. And time passes faster, relatively speaking, to a person in a rest position or that being a person on Earth watching something go by. 
But again, we're talking, remember, about things that are going a very high percentage of the speed of light. Not possible today, maybe someday, we'll see. Good, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. So maybe uh, Ellie and Anne Sophie, if you're there, say hello. Otherwise, I'll assume you've got something else you have to do and I'll send you the video. Okay, good. Um, so we're more or less up to the next, the next part of our Einstein ideas. We finished, we finished time dilation. That was mostly chapter 15. And now in your book, it's chapter 16, which is about special relativity. And let's see what that means. It means more or less three topics, okay? We're talking about length. We're talking about momentum. Oh, if I can spell it, momentum. And we're talking about energy. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Okay, I'm trying to see what this was. Um, here's kind of a weird problem or conundrum, if you like fancy words. And it's this. Let's say we've got a rocket going this way. And it's going 0.8 of the speed of, so 80% of the speed of light. Okay, remember the speed of light was C. So if we're going 80% of it, we're going to call it 0.8 C. So we're going really fast. Okay, now let's say we got a rocket ship going the other way towards this one, also going. 0.8. Remember when we did this? Ah, okay, thanks, Ellie. Good, good to have you with us. Remember when we did this, when you and I were like, when you and your partner were walking towards each other, okay? And we said, oh, well, that's easy. If I'm going two and two and we're walking towards each other, it looks like we're going four meters per second. Well, here, what would you guess? If we didn't know about Einstein's ideas, what would you guess? This guy would look over at this rocket and say, oh, it's coming at me with what velocity? So maybe you could type something in. And and Sophie's here too, thank you. So what velocity would these guys say they're approaching each other at if it's 0.8 C and 0.8 C? Type something in, what do you think? You can do it just in terms of C. I'll change colors here. Zach, you got it. So. If we were looking at this from the idea of a, a Newton, a Newton, exactly, Ellie, a Newton perspective, we would say, Ellie, both you and Zach are right. It would be double it. It would be 1.6 C. But it turns out because of Einstein's second postulate that everybody measures C the same, C ends up being a, a limit, as it were. We're going to see in this unit why C is that limit mathematically. Okay? But what would happen is... They would approach each other. So I'll say actually, actually, they approach each other at, you ready? 0 0.98 C. So they can't ever get past the speed of light. We'll see why that's a natural law based on Einstein's equations here during this unit. Wow, pretty bizarre. Okay, but before we get to that law, 
we're going to take a look at something else entirely. Last time we talked about time dilation. Today we're going to begin with what's called length. Um, traction. All right, what does that mean? Okay, now, it's a pity I can't do this in the classroom because I like to run with a meter stick and drive my students crazy. So now I've got to take a very shorter uh, envelope opener and imagine, right, imagine that this sucker is going this way at a high speed of, of percentage of the speed of light. Okay, like 80, 85% of the speed of light. Well, here's the deal. Let's say I'm moving with it. So as I move along with this thing, now I'm gonna pretend this is a meter stick instead of whatever it is, 20, 30 centimeters. So let's say this is my meter stick. As I look at it, it's gonna look like a meter. And if I run with it, just like you on the train, everything, all the laws of nature of, of physics work on the train. So all the laws that I have work. And as I look and run with this thing at a very fast speed, it still looks like it's one meter long. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to put you in this perspective. You're going to be on Earth, okay? You're going to be this person here on the green Earth watching this stick go by. So you're going to be in what we call a rest reference point, okay? Or rest, oh, rest frame of reference. Whew, that's the Einstein word. We'll write that in a sec. As a rest frame of reference, if you see this thing go by, and it's going with the, the long axis, it's going with the direction of the velocity, okay? It's gonna look shorter. So why is that gonna be the case? Why do we have length contraction? So to say it in words, at high velocities, Lengths are, they're not seen as shorter, they are shorter. So be careful. It's not like a magician's trick. So lengths are shorter when measured from a rest frame of reference. So not moving with the ruler. You know, we can make a little cartoon over here. So one meter, but when it's moving, well, well, we'll write more on the other board. Okay, so, so legs are shorter when viewed from a rest frame of reference. That's what I want to say. Okay, let me erase a little bit of the top part. Let me know if you got any questions too. But we're going to talk about why this is the case now. We live in such a Newton world, don't we? We don't really live usually in an Einstein world in terms of our day-to-day -day observations, which is maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. It does limit our point of view. Okay, at, so I'll do an example. At 87% of C, this, let's draw U, here's Earth, this viewed by U, here's your little eyeball, when you see the rocket ship go by, U it's going to look like this thing is Exactly, half a meter. So 
So it'll look exactly half of the measurement of the people on the rocket. So the people on the rocket say, no way. It's one meter long. So you'd have a little argument on the radio back and forth. Who's right? Turns out both parties are right. Both the, the one on the fixed range frame of reference, you on Earth, and if you were on the rocket ship, you'd be right that it's actually a meter long. Okay. Um, why? Okay, let's think of this mathematically now. Or we could say, why shorter? Well, let's look at our little equation, which we more or less learned first semester, right? C is just a type of velocity. And we said velocity is what? Distance divided by time. Yeah. What does it say in the rocket? In the rocket, it says a half a meter. Half a meter. And that's, uh, Anne Sophie, what the person on Earth is seeing. They're seeing it measured to be a half a meter long instead of a meter. Okay, so C is essentially its distance over time, or we're going to call it, well, let's call it that distance over time. And its distance in the direction of travel. You'll see why that's important in a second. So what's the big deal here? Okay, if you're looking up here from Earth and you see this rocket ship go by, it's taking a really, really, really short amount of time to go by. So what we're going to say is that for this perspective, for the, for the rest frame of reference for somebody on Earth, C is going to be this. It's going to be a really, really, really tiny amount of time. So I'm going to write the word time really small. Time. Tiny time. But if time is really small, that's the word time. The only way I can get C to be the same number is if distance is what? C will remain the same number, the speed of light. If time is tiny, distance has to be what? No. If D is larger, then I get a larger C, because if I got a small number on the bottom of the fraction and I make it larger up here, then I got a huge value and C is not the same anymore. That's it. So, um, yeah, Ellie has, so the distance has to be smaller. So we've got to have it exactly, Teresa, smaller, smaller T means I got a smaller D. So I'll write a little tiny distance. And we'll write over here as an explanation. Okay. Time to go by from the fixed frame of reference. Time to go by is shorter. So Einstein find that Einstein found that uh, so the distance has to be shorter. Let's say let's say must be shorter. Uh, also, to keep C, the speed of light, the same.
Yeah, and in this case, you really had to be an Einstein to figure that out. <laughs> because nobody figured that out before him. And really, as I read it, and might've told you last time, chapter 15 stuff, somebody might've figured out, but some of the chapter 16 stuff, who knows if anybody would have figured that out in any amount of time close to Einstein's. Remember this is like 1906, this is over a hundred years ago. And to do all this before we had measurements of things that were going super fast, not rocket ships, but electrons and stuff. So it's cool that he could predict all of this and he was right. Now, let me go back for a second while you're writing and show you what I mean by this. I wrote that, see, it's the distance and the direction of travel. In other words, if I have this going really fast and it's um, for me, it's a meter for you, it would look like whoop, half of this. But if I hold it this way and go really fast in this direction, this direction, is it going to look any shorter this way? Well, no, right? It's got to be in the direction of travel. If I make this go really fast this way, what will the shape look like? How would this change? Yeah, exactly, and Sophie, true. So what would the shape look like if I had this going this way? Can you guess? It would change, but how? Like we're talking like 80, 90% of the speed of light. And if you measured it, what would change? Yeah, good, yeah, exactly, Ellie. The width would change and uh, yeah, how thin it is. Would it get thinner or thicker, folks? What do you think? Yeah, Zach, right. The, the width would be smaller. So this would look more like a line to you and less like a width. Pretty bizarre, huh? So <laughs> to make that, here, we'll put, in, we'll put in the American part of the course now. You ready? See, I'd like to give you American culture along with uh, the German vocabulary sometimes. So here we go. We're going to use a baseball. So here's a baseball. And here's the stitching on the baseball. And let's say that's how it looks like if the velocity equals zero meters per second. But now let's let the velocity equal point, ready? 0.999 times the speed of light. So 99.9% .9 of the speed of light. What's our baseball gonna look like? <laughs> Can you be guessing? Thinner, exactly, exactly. So here's what it's gonna look, ready? You imagine being a batter and seeing a baseball coming at you that looked like a line? Be pretty hard to hit, right? <laughs> Must be quite a pitcher. Yeah, I think that's sort of cool. So it, be, it becomes, ends up being just a line. And again, why? Because as the baseball's moving, it covers such a uh, short amount of time that the distance has to be really short as well. So short that it looks like it's shortened by a huge amount. Um, if it's that high percentage, so almost speed of light. So kind of cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you now an equation that we're gonna use later, okay? And it's called the relativistic length contraction equation, big name. Relativistic length Contraction uh, equation, EQN. In other words, how do I figure out how thin this thing is? How do I figure out how much the distance changes? Okay, here we go. And I'm going to define everything first. Let me give you the equation. No, I'll define everything second. So here's the equation. L equals LO, which is the original original, T 
times a big parenthesis or a big uh, uh, root, a square root of one minus, and then it's this thing, V squared over C squared. So we're gonna use this later on, but this factor, one minus V squared over C squared, uh, ends up being uh, kind of what's going on. Okay, so V is the velocity, C is the speed of light, you know that. Uh, I guess really the only thing I gotta say is L is the length as seen by an outside observer. Length, whoops, length seen by outside observer. We'll see what an outside observer means. Oh man, my writing today. That's supposed to be an S, people. That's about the shabbiest S I've ever drawn in my life. And that's saying a lot. Seen by outside observer. And LO, and that's the length. Let's say just at rest. So if I was holding something in my hand, that would be L-O. That would be the length that I measure with it in my hands, okay? Okay, let's play a little math game here. You ready? Okay, so a couple examples. Um, at rest. V equals zero meters per second. All right, let's just kind of mentally think about it, okay? Here we go. I'm gonna put in zero up here. So what happens? Zero over C squared is just what? Zero or zero squared over C squared would just be what? Just seeing if you're still there. Thank you, Ellie. Good. Okay, so that would be zero. And check this out. One minus zero is, of course, one. Well, the square root of one is just, everybody's got it. Thank you. Square root of one is just one. So if V is zero, then it just ends up being L equals L zero times one, but that's just L zero. But that, like, duh. If it's not moving, of course it's going to look the same. <sighs> okay, all right, so that's sort of easy, huh? Um, now let's let C be – or let's let the velocity equals C. What would happen? You ready? Okay. What if we could have this, this thing going – the speed of light, not 99.9%, .9%, but the complete speed of light. We're going to put in C squared here. So you ready? So V is C, so let's put in C. So C squared over C squared is what? Oh, some of you got it already. Yeah. So it's 1. And then look at this. I got 1 minus 1, so 0. And then I got the square root of 0. Try and do the square root of zero. Not real, not real happy. Square root of zero, I don't know if it ends up being like zero. So at any rate, L, maybe it does. So it ends up being zero. So I get L zero, or not L zero, L equals L zero times zero. equals zero meters. Whoa. 
Can you see how we've got a problem going the speed of light mathematically? So theoretically, if I could go that fast, it would have no measurable width whatsoever. So this thing would be reduced to not even a point. So I, it's a problem mathematically. So, but to be clear, what I'm trying to get is, A, the closer we get to C, the closer L0 gets to zero. So I'll say, okay. Closer to C, the closer, oh, not L0, pardon me. Closer L gets to zero meters. And that's truly length contraction, isn't it? We've contracted it so much that it's reduced to nothing if I could go the speed of light. Well, let's try one last thing. I'm gonna leave the equation, but I'm gonna erase this up here, if I can do this. Uh, and I can't, I already screwed up and lost my equation. Let's bring it back. Okay, so. If you've seen yeah, so it's a limit, basically. Yeah, Ellie, and we're gonna we're gonna test that limit right now. So you guys have probably seen enough science fiction movies in your life, okay? Oh, I'm going like three times the speed of light or whatever. Well, let's just go a little more than the speed of light. You ready? So, what if what if our velocity is a little bit greater than the speed of light? Let's drop the numbers in and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna actually do it here to talk about it a little bit. So, so I'd have like square root of one minus, okay, now check it out. I'm gonna make my number bigger than this. So I'm gonna, we could pick a number, we could pick like two. Well, whatever we pick, two squared would be four, four C squared, the C's can, and then, wait a minute, but, but then I got one minus this. What's going to happen? Um, well, okay, back up. So, and Sophie, what's happening if somebody's moving C is that the length has getting infinitely close to zero meters. If you're looking at the thing going by at a fast speed, it's getting closer and closer to zero meters long. That's all I'm saying. But now if I put in something bigger than C, this number here, V squared over C squared, ends up being like, uh, so as an example, I could put in 2.0 times C. Well, if I put in 2.0, that would be two times two and C times C, it'd be like four C squared divided by c squared, and you can see what's gonna happen. It's gonna be ugly. Exactly, Ellie, you're there. So the c squared's canceled, but I got a problem. I got one minus four. So I got, I got L equals L zero times the square root of some negative number. If you know this, or if you don't, try and take the square root of a negative number and see what happens. It's not pretty, <laughs> okay? Your calculator is going to go error because I can't get a real number when I take the square root of a negative number. So in other words, mathematically, I cannot go past the speed of light. So Ellie, your guess was that this is some sort of limit. Exactly, exactly, and Sophie, it would be an imaginary number if you're in that mathematics, it would have I in it, but it wouldn't be a real number. So 
Um, C is a limit. Um, to any real value. And you might say maybe like N, so okay, what about imaginary values? Well, they're that, they're imaginary. A negative square root doesn't really exist. So C is a limit to any real value or length contraction. I'll abbreviate that. What we're going to talk about, let me look at my time. We still got 10 minutes. This time and next time I meet with you is, are there some other limits? And it turns out the answer starts with a Y. We're going to look at a couple other equations now. We'll see how far we get. But the length equation is telling us that the speed of light looks like a speed limit for the universe. Let's see if that happens with something else. Okay. So unless you got other questions and you can type them now. Then I'm going to move on to another idea and another equation. So I'm going to raise this lower part. I know this is fairly mathematical, but remember the quote of mathematics from Einstein. He said, you think you have troubles in mathematics. I've had extreme troubles in mathematics. <laughs> and now you can see why, right? He had imaginary numbers. He didn't think that was going to work out, but he figured out what the problem was. What's the word after length? Uh, it's short, Teresa, for contraction. Contraction, C-O-N-T-R. So that's the length, length contraction that we talked about uh, a little bit ago. Okay, um, let's talk about momentum. All right, I know we haven't had it, but momentum was equal to two things that we multiplied together. Can anybody remember? To get momentum, I multiply the hand by the hand. What do I get for your momentum? I think we have this. Yeah, because we talked about sheep running together or reindeer or whatever or people in a football game or whatever running into each other. So momentum is the hmm of something times the hmm. Good, thank you. Oh, Zach, you got them both. So it's mass times velocity. Okay, all right, let's try it out. You ready? Here we go. Well, it turns out, um, I'm going to give you an equation for relativistic momentum. In other words, we've got to correct this equation for momentum with Einstein's correction. Maybe the, remember this one over v squared over c squared thing? It's going to show up here too. The relativistic momentum. is da, da, da. it's m times v so the letters that zach gave me a moment ago divided by da, 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 the correction one square root of one minus you guessed her v squared over c squared that same thing we had in the length contraction equation and m is the mass uh, at rest. You'll see why I say that later on in the course. But for you and I, it's just the mass in kilograms. Relativistic, I think, Anne Sophie, did I write it wrong? Relativistic, oh, I did, thank you. Relativistic, so put an extra VI in there. I get so excited, I skip letters, don't I? Okay, so relativistic momentum. Okay, we're gonna play the same game, at least mentally, okay? Let's let V equals zero. So if V equals zero meters per second, 
what happens? I get zero squared over c squared, so that just ends up being zero. One minus zero, so one. Square root of one is one. Well, at, but of course this is zero too up here. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, let's cross out zero. Let's just say a low, low velocity. A low velocity. Yeah, let's do that. So essentially at a low velocity, I've got C and C was what? Big or small number? Relatively speaking. <laughs> C, big or small number? I know you're typing and it takes a while for your uh, typings to get to me. Must be like a pony on the internet today instead of like a rocket ship bringing your information to me. See, big or small number? Very big. Yes, thank you, Zach. And it turns out if C is a big number, C squared is really, really big. Okay. So if I got a low velocity, if I got a low number here and a really, really big number here, then I got a huge number in the denominator of the fraction and a really small number. So pretty much this becomes close to zero, doesn't it? It's a little number divided by huge numbers close to zero. So I got one minus zero. So basically, if V is a low velocity, then momentum just equals M times V, which is the equation Zach gave me earlier. In other words, it's normal. That's what we call the Newtonian or Isaac Newton type of speed, okay? Like you and I experience on Earth. Okay, and thanks everybody else for answering. I'm sorry it takes so long for your answers to get to me. But, let's see how I wanna do this. Um, at big velocity. In other words, let's make it a really high percentage of the speed of light. Speed of, uh, light. So it's getting really close to C. Well, what happens if this starts to get really close to C squared on top, and I got a C squared already in the bottom, <clears throat> we're really getting close to one, aren't we? Or it's gonna be like 0.9 something whatever. So one minus that ends up being a small number. Now, stick with me on this and see if we can get it here. So I got, that's a big number now and a big and a big, so that's getting really close to one. One minus almost one. So the number, the, the bigger C is when I go one minus that, the number down here at the bottom of this big fraction is gonna become closer and closer to what? Exactly, Ellie, that's gonna be a big number. So, so, so I'm gonna go one minus big over big, and then the bottom of the fraction is gonna get close then to what number? One minus that. I know this is a little hard math to really think about. You'll see why I'm asking this. So another, my question is what happens to the bottom of the fraction? So I got a really big, the close to C, so this becomes close to one. And I got one minus that, and then the square root of that. Um, I'm guessing your, your responses just have not getting, what was the question? Uh, I think I'm gonna ask it and then answer it because uh, we're running out of time. Okay, so, um, if, if the V on top is really close to C, then I'm getting close to one. So one minus like 0.99 or whatever is gonna be a small number, square root of that is even smaller. So what happens is I get the N times V that Zach talked about earlier, divided by a really small number. In fact, as I get closer to C, the, the denominator down here gets super, super, super small. If I divide by a really small number, 
Yeah, exactly. If I divide NV by a really, really small number in the denominator, what's going to happen to NV? So in other words, at a big V, momentum becomes... So NV divided by tiny number, NV divided by small number. What happens mathematically? Thing on top divided by like 0. 0.00001 or something. Yeah, the first, Ellie, it'll become huge. Momentum becomes huge with a capital H. What does that mean for you and I? It means this, and take this with you to think about till next time. As I get close in my rocket ship to going the speed of light, I got a problem. My momentum becomes huge. What do I have to do with fuel? How much fuel do I gotta get to make that momentum happen? Turns out, and we'll study this next time, I need an infinite amount of fuel. That's a problem with trying to beat the speed of light. I need a huge amount of fuel to get going that fast. We'll talk more about that next time. I know we're in the middle of our discussion, but that's okay. It's not a bad spot to end. And I'll see you. Uh, I'll give you uh, uh, directions for our next YouTube. And I guess I won't send this out because all four of you were there. And I'll just wish you a good couple of days till I see you again. So bye-bye.